So I recently mentioned that I wanted to start featuring some magic, specifically magic arena content on the channel. And this is going to be the first video along those lines. I am going to be doing a draft and there's a couple of reasons for that. First and foremost, because I just started playing, my collection is pretty slim and I've been trying to play draft to bolster my collection. Uh, all of the drafts when you play them in Magic Arena are keeper drafts, so you do keep the cards you pick, so it's a great way when you're first starting out to build your collection. But uh, also, if I'm being honest, draft and or sealed, just like the limited formats, were always my favorite formats to play in Magic the Gathering. Uh, the next best is typically standard, like I enjoy playing standard formats. So uh, starting with a draft is just going to be natural to me. I've been doing some drafts uh, like off stream and like off YouTube obviously. I've got some seven win runs. I'm already up to uh, like the gold tier rank which is like middle of the pack if you will uh, which I think is pretty good for just picking up the game. Granted I'm not new to magic. I've been playing magic for a long long time. Magic is not a new game so picking it up didn't exactly take long but I'm still uh, excited and impressed with how fast I've kind of adapted to the interface. Now this draft that I'm going to be doing is going to be the best of one type. So when you play these, you can either do best of one or the traditional like best of three series like you would play for physical magic. Uh, I believe Arena calls it traditional. And uh, I'm going to do the best of one version. You buy in and you get three packs if you're not familiar with the draft format. And then you essentially keep taking cards and you build a deck out of the cards that you take. Deck has to be at least 40 cards and you do get to include lands in it. And you play until you get either seven wins or three losses. As we can see down here, there are rewards tied to that. You always earn at least a pack, but you also get some gems depending on where you finish. Uh, if you get up to six wins, then you're uh, essentially gaining gems. Uh, if you use gems to buy in, and that's what I'm going to do for this particular one, it's 750 as you can see here. So when you get to six wins, you get 850 gems plus your pack back. And if you get all the way uh, to seven wins, then uh, you get two packs and some additional gems. Now, uh, you can also buy in with gold. It takes 5,000 gold. Gold is the currency you get for doing like your daily quests uh, and just kind of like playing the game. Uh, draft is a great way to convert your gold into gems, if you will, because gems is essentially uh, like the premium currency. It's what you buy in the store if you're paying money. It's how you can buy uh, packs and again drafts and all sorts of things. So uh, draft is just a great way to convert your gold into gems. It's fun. You get to build your collection. It's a natural starting place. So uh, we're going to start with a draft. This video is going to be me going through the draft and explaining my picks and my reasoning. And then uh, because I'm going to label this video like part one, uh, the additional parts will be the games I actually play uh, throughout the draft so you can kind of see how the deck I built performed. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and dive into the draft. Yes, I would like to confirm my purchase. <laughs> okay, well, so I was just about to say that normally when I, when I draft, I've been having the most success with Boros in this set, and if you're not familiar, Boros means the red and white color combinations. Um, I'll talk a little bit about basics as I go, but I won't do like a full streamlined this is how you play magic sort of thing because magic's been around for a quarter of a century at this point and there are uh, enough tools and guides out there to kind of help with that. But magic does have five colors. So if you're coming from like the Elder Scrolls Legends, think like the five attributes and uh, Boros represents uh, red and white. And that's what I've been having the most success with in draft, but uh, right out of the gate here, we're offered uh, a legendary Planeswalker. This is a mythic rare that is the highest rarity. Um, this is a very good card. And honestly, it's very, very good in draft as well. Uh, these Planeswalkers allow you to use special abilities once per turn, and then you adjust their loyalty based on the action you take. Uh, that's what those numbers on the left mean. So the plus one, the minus three, the minus eight are referencing loyalty. And you can think of loyalty as like their life total, right? And they start uh, at the number in the bottom, right? So when you play this particular one, they start with five loyalty, and then you can either use the plus one ability or the minus three. And this is, this is a pretty good, 
card to lead off with. Even if I don't end up playing red blue, it's the sort of thing that you can't really pass up taking it for your collection. So this is likely going to be the pick, but I do want to just uh, go through and see what else was here. Um, typically when you're drafting, there's an acronym that you follow and it's been around for a long, long time in magic and it's called uh, bread. And the important part is remembering the beginning of it. So B is for bombs. These are things that just win you the game. And then R is for removal. E is for evasion. Those are creatures that can get around blockers, things that have like flying, for example. And so as we go through this pack, this, this would be considered a bomb. Like this can change the course of a game. So we're gonna go ahead and take this for sure. And then uh, we would look for like removal throughout. So uh, this capture sphere is like pseudo removal because it can tap a creature and kind of take them out of combat. Um, this is a good quality creature. Uh, there's a couple of counter spells here. So, I mean, there's okay stuff in this pack, but far and away, uh, this is this is going to be this first Think pick. You can beat me? You're welcome. And I promise I won't, I won't be as long-winded as we progress through. I will kind of pick it up. So now, moving on, if we wanted to stay in our red colors, this is another fantastic pickup. This is a great one drop. Uh, the mentor ability, and you can see as I mouse over it here, it pops up on the screen. It says whenever this creature attacks, it puts a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. But because you can uh, pay mana to activate this and make this bigger, you can potentially keep scaling the mentor, keep getting the bonus. So this is a very good one drop. Um, this guild mage is great if we end up in those colors. Uh, this creature has evasion, so it meets one of the uh, criteria that we were looking for before. Uh, we got some removal, some removal down here with this deadly visit, um, which is a very strong card in this format, but at two black, it's going to be hard to splash if we do want to play uh, our, our rare here. So uh, it really comes down to... Do we want to take this guild mage and maybe commit to like a red, black, blue uh, with splashing of some kind? Do we want to take uh, this goblin, which is most likely. Uh, this mesmerist is also not terrible. If we want to stick with blue, but right now it's looking like this goblin. And then we come to another pretty tough decision. I'm not going to lie. So... Uh, this card is a fantastic closer and it acts as removal. Does six damage to any target. Uh, this card has the potential to be really annoying. It does damage to target creature equal to the total number, total number, excuse me, I'm stuttering, of instant and sorcery cards you own in your exile. Uh, uh, and your uh, graveyard. I swear I'm, I haven't been drinking or anything. I'm just filming this pretty late. And... As such, because this has jumpstart, uh, and jumpstart means you can essentially play it a second time if you pitch a card to do it. Uh, when I say pitch, uh, that's slang for discard a card. Um, you can use this twice, so it ends up being pretty powerful. Uh, and then we also have this guild mage, which we would have to splash for, but I'm not going to lie. Uh, this thing is a house in draft and in limited play. So all of these are high quality cards that we would want to take. Um, my instinct tells me this is probably the best because it's a closer. But that is a tough call. I think we're still going to go with the blaze, though. Man, that's a tough call. All right. Next up. If we're trying to stick with our colors here, uh, our options are Fire Urchin. This Passwall Adept is actually really solid for a common because of the uh, activated ability on it. And then we have Radical Idea and Hellkite Whelp. And while our curve is pretty high, if we take this, this does meet that evasion requirement I was talking about earlier because it has flying. Uh, the thing with flying is that flying creatures can only be blocked by other creatures with flying. So I think we're going to go ahead and take this Whelp. And... Uh, now we have uh, this Invert and Invent. Uh, this is a very solid card. The split card, if you're not familiar with them in Magic, you can choose one or the other when you play it. But we also have Silent Dart. And as cheeky and fun as this is, this ends up just being better most of the time. It's also uh, kind of cheaper to invest in, and we need some early game. So we're going to actually take the Dart here. And things are starting to dwindle down in terms of quality picks. 
Um, both of these are fine for bodies. The Urchin is a, just a 1-3 for 2 mana. is a pretty solid body. We could also take this for mana fixing, potentially, but right now we're so heavy red that we don't really need it. Um, here we're going to go ahead and take the Adept instead of the Gate. If we wanted to stay in colors, we could take this Punch, but this is also potentially a fixer. So we're going to go ahead and actually take this Locket. I'm not a huge fan of, of the Punch. At least not enough to take it there. Uh, now we have our choice of counter spells. We're back to our original pack as it kind of cycles through. And both of these are solid choices. Uh, I'm leaning towards this one just because it is uh, cheaper and it's a greater like cost to benefit ratio. It's also only one blue, whereas this is two blue. And we don't have anything that takes two blue yet. So we're going to go ahead and take this. And the Mesmerist came back. So we're going to take that and be pretty happy. It's a good proactive play in blue. And now we have to start making some tough choices. Um, we're going to take this just because if we do end up splashing white later, this is a reasonable splash. But we're likely not taking it. We're going to take the Adept again. And the uh, Invert Invent made it all the way back to us. So we'll happily pick that up here. Uh, we'll take the red card, no guarantee that we play it. And then we can go ahead and throw this away because we're, we're definitely not playing that. All right, so now we have to make some decisions. Uh, we could take the rare here. And if you're building a collection and you just want to keep taking all of your rares, I don't blame you, right? It's a great way to build a collection. The problem is uh, at two black, we're not playing this. And I like to play to win. So unless it's something that I absolutely can't pass up, like if we were offered another mythic rare planeswalker or something, then sure. But otherwise, I think it's pretty safe to pass. So we're not going to take that. Um, this is actually a, a splashable card. Uh, we could, in theory, take that. Beam Splitter Mage is uh, at least in our colors, but we don't have a lot of uh, synergy with it at the moment. We have uh, Muse Drake, which replaces itself. I'm a big fan of that. Piston Fist Cyclops fits our, our deck pretty well, uh, as does Leapfrog. And Whisper Agent, though it's blue and black, because of the way that mana looks, you can choose to play blue or black mana when you pay for it. Um, in theory, we could just treat this as a blue creature, still be fine. Uh, and this is a solid creature because of the flash and the surveil. So given our choices, in terms of power level, uh, it's probably Whisper Agent or the Muse Drake, and I could see an argument for either or, but this has flying, and this also doesn't require two blue sources to play it, so we're actually going to take this Drake. We have to keep an eye on our curve, though. All right, so now, remember before when I was like, hey, unless there's like a Mythic Rare, you, you take stuff in your colors? Well, this is a Mythic Rare. That's, uh... It's going to be pretty hard to pass up. We, we can't play it. But thankfully, the rest of this pack is uh, semi-lackluster. Like, this is going to be the pick if we don't take that Mythic Rare. Because this is removal. But we've already got a pretty decent high end anyway. So we're going to just take the Mythic, add it to our collection. And now we get past uh, a Rare in our Colors. Fire Mind's Research. Whenever you cast an instant or a sorcery spell, you put a charge counter on it, and then you can remove charge counters to do things. So if we're going to consider taking that, we have to consider how many instants and sorceries we're actually running, because running a card like that doesn't matter if we're never going to get triggers on it. And right now we've got one. You know what? Let's go ahead and get rid of uh, some of these that we're likely not going to play. All right. So we have one. Two, three instants or sorceries. That's not looking great. Meanwhile, we have this that if we do want to splash for white, becomes a decent card for us, right? Because we can play the integrity portion just by uh, playing red, and then you'd only need white if we wanted to do the intervention portion. So it's less likely to be a dead card if you do splash for that. That's not terrible. Um, we do have Whisper Agent again, Fire Agent again. This is at uh, Guild Gate. So it just comes down to, uh, do we want to take the rare and then try to take a bunch more 
of the like instance or do we just take the safer pick and take take an instant slash sorcery now that's a bit of a tough call that is a bit of a tough call I think ultimately we're going to let this pass just because we have no guarantee that we're going to draft enough usable instants and we don't want to shoehorn them in. So we're going to go ahead and take this and maybe open up the opportunity for a splash. Now if we are going to splash, uh, this is a fantastic card to include. This is a very powerful card with the Mentor and the First Strike. And if we don't take that, then it's uh, either going to be this Minotaur, the Cyclops, or the Urchin, but... Um, this is just a really powerful card and it's hard to pass up. So I think we're going to go ahead and take that. So we're opening ourselves up to, uh, the possibility of splashing white. And as such, cards like this become, uh, far more attractive. So we're going to go ahead and take that fresh faced recruit. Uh, here I don't like locksmith. I'm just not a fan. So our next best bet is probably to just take the vigil in case we do splash white and as i said at the start of this i'm a big fan of boros so if we are going to splash white it makes makes some okay sense um we could take this as a fixer or we could take the goblin goblin's nice because it trades up so if something has three health goblin would still kill it let's go ahead and we're going to change our layout here just a bit so that i can take a look at what our our creatures and so forth look like because when you run a 40 card deck you're probably looking at about 17 lands and 23 playable cards and we're already at like potentially 17 playable cards so we could probably risk taking this as a, a fixer here and still be fine opening up again our opportunity to splash. Um, this is what came back and the, the boar is uh, easily our best pick of the bunch because it's a body and it also uh, buffs things for a turn. Uh, here, even though we have basically no, no current synergy with this um, other than the integrity, we're gonna take this anyway because it's just a playable body. And then we have Boar again, or the uh, Halberdier. Or a utility card that uh, we could use for exiling uh, some things. But really, we need bodies at the moment. So again, I'm just going to do this so we can kind of take a look at our curve. We already have one Boar, and we only have one three drop, and it's a locket. So we're going to take the three drop here. Try to shore up our curve a bit. Uh, here it's the Urchin. Here it's the Witness. Witness might not end up making the final cut, but again, right now we're just kind of taking cards that potentially fit our needs. And then these can just go straight to the sideboard. And here we are <clears throat> presented with another rare in our colors. So Experimental Frenzy. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You can play the top card of your library you can't play cards from your hand and then you can pay to destroy it so the way this works is when it's on the board uh, the, you play this when like your hand is empty and then when it's on the board you can just keep playing stuff from the top of your deck so it's actually not terrible uh, if we didn't take that we would desperately want to take this sphinx this sphinx is a very very good card in limited it's uh, potentially qualifies as a bomb but this is quite the resource engine, and it is in our colors. So we have a very tough decision to make here. Um, I think if I was like in a tournament, I'd probably still take the Sphinx here. But because I am still trying to build my collection as a new player, uh, and this card actually sees some play right now in Constructed, and it's in our colors, I'm going to take the Frenzy. But I do want to point out that I would probably take the Sphinx if I was like in a tournament. The Sphinx is just that powerful. And there's no way that Sphinx comes back to us, sadly. So, all right. <clears throat> we have a, a Guild Mage, and it's a very, very good one. 
All of the guild mages are, are solid. 2-2 uh, two, two body that can potentially draw us more cards. And we have the potential to copy an instant or sorcery that we control with a converted mana cost of X. So we could keep copying um, the things that we did draft. Which is a, a really powerful effect. So this is an option. Uh, we do also have this uh, Gatekeeper Gargoyle. Which we only have the one, one gate so far that we've drafted. But, I mean, it's still a flyer. Uh, we also have this Watcher in the Mist, which is uh, a flyer, and it has Surveil. And these are all really powerful. Uh, in terms of, like, raw power level, it probably comes down to Watcher in the Mist versus our Guild Mage. So again, as we kind of pay attention to our curve, um, we have a decent number of 2-drops. Not a lot in the 5-drop area. But it's really hard to pass up something like this because of the value engine. This is a tough call. And there's no way that both of them make it back, but I think we have to take the guild mage here. Alright, so uh, we have chemists, uh, chemisters, excuse me, insight, which is just more value engine, dig, dig, dig. But it is an instant and it has jump start, so it can potentially help with some of our synergy effects. Uh, and then it's uh, a body, a gate down here for fixing, uh, a wall for stalling, another adept, but we already have a pair and a sure strike. I think we still take this. Wow, uh, we're back to a choice of Sphinx or uh, Hypothesis. So uh, this is card draw and removal. But like this is a bomb. Like there's no we don't we don't take the Sphinx there. I'm shocked that made it to us. Another Guild Mage as well. So the choice here would be between the Guild Mage and the Bodyguard, which is a very big body. But again, uh, these Guild Mages are kind of outstanding. Um, choices here are lock it for more fixing, Guild Gate again for potential fixing if we want to splash white. We're still open uh, to that possibility. There's nothing really that's in our colors outside of that. Like, we could take this for a splash if we, again, were thinking about white, because this is a, a big body. This is okay, but it's really not great. So, um, locket or gate. We'll take the gate here. We already have one locket, and I don't like to run more than one locket. Uh, and again, uh, here we have radical idea or a gate that's not the splash gate. Uh, I'd like to take that, but Radical Idea is at least playable here. We don't need another uh, red-white gate, so we're going to take the Adept, because bodies are bodies are bodies are bodies. Um, so here we have Sergeant, Crab, or uh, Leapfrog. So Leapfrog has pseudo evasion, meaning if you've played an instant or sorcery, it can fly for a turn. Uh, whereas this has uh, Mentor, and it's really strong, but our threes are very, very weak in terms of curve. So Leapfrog actually wins out. Even if this is potentially a more powerful card, could really use the, the help here. And again, kind of the same thing. We're going to go ahead and take this Leapfrog. Dazzling Lights is a good combat trick, but uh, there's like a, a minimum number of creatures that you really want to run when you're in a in a draft in a limited environment again same thing we're trying to we already have three pass well uh add ups and we're trying to shore up our three drops and we're not likely to run any of these like let's be honest um i guess we'll we'll take this but that's going to likely get cut uh, wall of mist is potentially playable this can go straight to the sideboard and uh it's in our color but this can go straight to the sideboard Okay, so now we're at the deck building phase. If you're not familiar, in Magic Arena, as you're going through deck building, it will make some auto suggestions in terms of your colors, and then as you adjust things, this will update. So what I've been doing is I've kind of just been paying attention to the cards I want to play, making changes there, and then afterwards I come back and make sure that this is uh, set up the way that I wanted it to be set up. So we're going to start by... Um, coming over here and taking a look at the white cards that we drafted because I don't want to run a lot of them. Uh, we want to keep our our splash color low in volume and only run like the really powerful stuff that's worth it. And if they can be played without white, even better. So 
The 1-1 one, one for 1, we can go ahead and drop. I mean, this is an okay card, but we can go ahead and drop that. We're going to leave this in for now, because this is actually really powerful. Uh, we're going to leave this in for now, because it is uh, playable, even at uh, just having red colored mana. We're going to leave this in for the same reason. It's still playable. Uh, and we're going to leave the Vigil in for now, and then we're going to revisit, just because Vigil is uh, pretty good. Uh, the altitude's not great. This is our, our goblin that is solid. We want to try to leave in some of our instants and sorceries because we have a lot that interacts with it. Uh, specifically, we have things like uh, Beam Splitter Mage and our, our Planeswalker. Fire Urchin. So this Wall of Mist, we have a lot of creatures that are like 1-3s for 2. And 3 is still a big health total, but at least the 1-3s can attack. So I think we can safely cut this Wall of Mist for now. Both of those are great. Um, we might end up cutting something there. The Chemist's Insight is solid. Flying is solid. Frenzy will keep for utility. Slash dig. All right, so everything else up here is looking fine. So again, it's looking like this Candlelight Vigil is going to come out. Because we're just trying to uh, reduce our white count. And now we still have seven more cards to cut. And our most saturated spot is very clearly two drops. So we're going to take a, a long look at that, but then also uh, our three drops as well. So we're actually going to go ahead and just get rid of one of these three twos for now. And then come back to our two drops and kind of see where we're at. This might not end up making the cut as strong as it is. Because if we cut this, then our splash is essentially just... For this intervention and then we don't even have to run planes we could like get away with likely just running our two guild gates and be fine but this is a really powerful card so we're gonna we're gonna keep it for now and see if we can't cut somewhere else uh, radical idea could potentially go but again we have a lot of stuff that triggers off of instance and sorceries This is kind of a tough call here. This boar could end up going. It's nice with the mentor cards, but not necessarily um, great. So in terms of creatures, I usually try to run somewhere between 15 and 16 creatures in drafts. So we do have room to cut like four creatures-ish. Uh, we probably don't need three adepts, so we'll go down to two there. And again, the boar is nice, but not necessary, so we'll probably cut that. So we have four more cards to cut. And again, kind of paying attention here, can cut as many as, like, I'd say two more creatures. I like where we are for lands at 17, and then we have essentially an 18th with this locket, but I'm okay with being a little bit uh, heavy in that regard because we do also have a lot of draw effects. So if we get flooded, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. We really just don't want to get uh, screwed. That's where you don't get enough. And so now we got to start making some hard cuts. This, this has the potential to get cut. It's a good utility card, but... Um, in, in draft, you might not be able to make as much use of it as you would like. The counter spell could end up going. Uh, the radical idea is just a dig, so that could end up going. But again, uh, it does kind of count for our instant and sorcery counts. But we have we have four cards that we we need to cut here. It's entirely possible we end up just cutting this as well. But then we're pretty low on our three drop count. It's uh, the two drops that... That are looking where it's at. I, I think, sadly, this this uh, Sunhome Stalwart isn't going to end up making the cut, gang. That hurts me inside. Because we have a lot of one threes, so this thing could mentor him up, but... Uh, that makes it so it's very clean, and then we can end up ditching this planes later and just run the uh, the guild gates. Because the only thing that the guild gates would be uh, required for would be for intervention here. Uh, 
And this Mesmerist is a solid creature, but it's very proactive, and right now our list is a bit reactive till we hit our late game bombs. So it's attempting to cut this as well. And then that would take us down to our 15. So we'd have to cut two uh, essentially like non-creature cards to fit in what we're looking for here. And again, this, uh, this invert invent is uh, a likely culprit. You know, this beam splitter mage is also a, a potential cut. Like as we go back and we look, um, this is like a buff. But the beam splitter really only matters on self buffs and that's the only one. So uh, we actually might bring the mesmerist back or one of the adepts and then just cut this beam splitter. I think I like that much more. I still really like this card because it's a uh, good positive tempo. I think that it's going to end up being uh, Invert, Invent, and Radical Idea that end up getting cut here. The rest of the cards feel like the, the sorts of things that you would want to include. And this Insight is just a better card draw option than the Radical Idea is. Muse Drake cycles itself. Blaze is solid. Again, kind of wanted to keep uh, the count somewhat high because of Ral, but I got a feeling this might end up being more uh, decoy than anything. And I'm fine with that. I mean, the other option is we, we could just not even run the gates and dump this. But I really do think that including that is, is proper. I think that's still overall a better card than the uh, Invert Invent for Limited. So it does appear that this is going to be what we're going to run. And now we're going to come down here and pull this plane. Uh, it's going to disable the auto-suggest and, and yell at us a bit, but we're okay with that. We have a higher... A uh, blue card count overall. This makes our red count technically a bit higher, but these count for red as well with the mountain. So technically we're already at like nine red sources. So the uh, addition here is most certainly an island to be our 17th card. And then that's that's going to be what we settle in on is this this list. So decent curve. Uh, at least 15 creatures. Uh, I usually like 16, but being that we're um, is it or that red-blue combo, focusing on some non-creature cards is pretty important for some of the triggers that we want to go off. And we've got a lot of card draw, so we should be able to find our creatures. So this is what we're going to go with. So we're going to go ahead and lock this in, say done. Uh, that is the draft. So that's just me kind of thinking through my process, going through the deck building. As I said, this is going to be uh, part one. So the next video, which should be out uh, the day after this one comes out, uh, will be games, right? So at least game one. Um, I'm going to take you through the whole run, win or lose, because I think it's important to see when a deck performs well, when it doesn't perform well, kind of understand why it doesn't perform well. Uh, if I'm being honest, I don't think this is a seven win run deck. I'm not super sold on is it in draft. As I said before, I prefer to draft Boros. And it can be a mistake often to try to like force a draft, but I just feel like the red-white combo is much better and limited right now for this particular set. Uh, but we're going to take this red-blue deck, see how far we can go with it. And like I said, win or lose, I'm going to show you guys the games. And uh, I also think it's important to show you because in Magic the Gathering, uh, you do sometimes lose because of lands. And... You're going to see my pain when that happens because it's literally like the only thing I don't like about magic is losing to either uh, Mana Flood or Mana Screw. So anyway, uh, this has been the draft in the deck building uh, portion. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I hope you will come back tomorrow for the games. Thanks.